Okay, so what is the proper delta t to achieve that? The proper delta t to achieve that, especially to map this into minus. It, yeah, so so basically, um, that means delta t times my most negative lambda has to be, um, well, uh, times uh, the lower bound has to be equal to minus 2, right? So my delta t is going to be uh, about uh, basically 1 over 2 e4 right okay so now if you look at the again the matrix the delta t I'm taking actually corresponds exactly to the size of my diagonal right it's actually the size of the diagonal uh, that uh, I'm taking as the time step size here. Okay. Um, so that's actually a one of the inspiration we can see from the solving the Poisson's equation is we can take a time step size that is proportional to how big the diagonal is. The diagonal is, and. Uh, uh, of course, one of the questions is that over here, the diagonals are the same, right? Every single diagonal in the matrix is the same quantity. What if I have a finite element? For example, we see that when we are in finite element, especially when the size of the elements are not uniform, the diagonals are not the same. So what do we do in that case? Any suggestions? Take the biggest. Well, if you take the biggest, you have a problem because uh, uh, you, if you take the biggest, uh, then you may actually have some have some amplification factors that are larger than admissible, right? So, I mean, you usually, usually, if you do care about time accuracy, you actually take the smallest admissible time step. But here, we actually don't care about time accuracy, right? So we only want to actually converge to the final equilibrium state. So we actually don't really care about if I'm using one time step on this grid point and a different time step on a different grid point. It's completely fine. So the idea of Jacobi is essentially a uh, grid point dependent time step. And uh, the time step actually is going to be exactly uh, the same uh, size as the diagonal of the entry. So, so here is uh, uh, what what we are doing. Let's write it down. So when I'm say, uh, solving ax uh, plus f equal to zero, okay, I'm going to be solving. Instead, I'm going to be taking a time step over delta t is equal to AXK plus F, but the delta T actually depends on which entry it is. So if I am the ith entry of X, I'm looking at the ith entry, the delta T actually depends on R. In particular, uh, well, in particular, uh, I think I might, uh, did I? Did I make a mistake somewhere? Oh, sorry. Delta T is not one over this. Delta T is actually actually just a two e four because uh, uh yeah a lambda is actually wait. Uh, did I make a mistake somewhere? It's one over this, but uh, yeah, it's 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 one of this, and uh, it's actually. It's inverse proportional to the diagonal. It's it's not the uh, the diagonal, right? So so the diagonal is actually uh, is actually two e four instead of uh, one over two e four. So basically here, what I want to do is I want uh, this delta t to be 
to cancel out to be inverse proportional to the diagonal corresponding diagonal entry of of a, so that delta t multiplied by that the diagonal entry is going to be exactly one. So here delta t i is going to be one over a i i. Right. Um, actually, I think uh, a has a negative sign, so so delta t is minus one over a i i. Okay, so the resulting scheme is uh, x k plus one i minus x k i would be equal to. Uh, let's actually separate the diagonals and off diagonals. So the diagonals are going to be. Um, the diagonals are going to be delta t i times a i i times x k i and then I need to multiply delta t i times the a minus the diagonal of a times x k right and uh, at ith entry plus uh, delta t i times f i Right. So essentially what I'm doing is I'm splitting the matrix A into diagonal entries plus an off-diagonal entry. The diagonal entry is going to be cancelled out because uh, uh, delta T i uh, multiplied by A i i is exactly minus 1. So, so this and this are going to be cancelled out. At the end I have x i k plus 1 would be equal to just the off diagonal entries uh, and the delta ti is 1 over minus 1 over a i i times a minus d uh, times x k i plus uh, again minus 1 over a i i of f i Right. Does it make sense? Okay. Another way of uh, thinking about this is that uh, once I split, l let me let me take a, a different uh, approach. Once I split a equal to d plus a minus d, I can apply the decomposition to the equation. So a times x would now be d times x plus a minus d times x, right? And uh, uh, ax plus f equal to 0 is just going to be d times x plus a minus d times x plus f equal to 0. And I can move the diagonal part and uh, the rest into different sides of this equation. So d times x would now be equal to minus of a minus dx minus f. The Jacobi method is nothing but taking a k plus 1 over here and take a k over here. Okay, so, so essentially we are splitting the matrix into diagonal parts and off-diagonal parts. And uh, the diagonal part is going to be inverted, because inverting a diagonal matrix is really easy. And uh, the non-diagonal part is going to be applied to the previous time steps solution. And we just uh, iterate until convergence.